and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the parent-child relationship tab, which is found on each object. And what this is going to allow us to do is to set some parameters on the child object so that it either is following the parent exactly or it has a little bit of freedom to do what it wants. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, so real quick in this project I have a player. I have an object that we're going to use as a child. It just so happens to be a small little bunny. And then I have an enemy for testing purposes as well. In the player under object connections tab, which if you don't have it, you need to go to the cogwheel, add connect object. When you click OK, it'll pop up. I've added a object to be connected. That object is going to be this child bunny. And then I've made sure down here to make it into a child object for this object. So I want this object to be a true child. Now with that out of the way, we can actually go to the child bunny and we can go to the display and parent child relationship tab and then we can come down here to the objects parent child relationship parameters and this is exactly where we would set up everything we need as far as it being a child to the player. So let's start with the child object movement. Now by default everything is going to be set to stick to parent object. So I want to show you what that looks like real quick. And when the play test pops up here, you'll see the bunny. And then you'll see as I turn left, it instantly snaps and it's instantly following. There's no delay. There's nothing. Whereas before in the intro, you saw it having a little bit of a delay. Now it's following these hard points because I set it to follow the connection points. So if we go back to the player, object connections, under the bunny, I have it set to be following this familiar follow point, which you set up in the animations. So if you go to player, for instance, in the idle here, you can see that the familiar follow point is right here when I'm going down. You can see that's right here when I'm going left, right, and when I'm facing up. So that's why it's having that little bit of uh, space in between there. So back in the parent-child relationship tab, we can see that stick to parent object means that it is going to stick to that parent object. Nothing is going to be able to move it. Even if you tried to do a move object runtime or something like that, it will not move. It's going to stick to that parent completely. There's also an option right above it that says don't follow the parent object. So if we were to play test using that option, we'll see that the bunny just can stay there. You can see though that it's still looking in the direction, so we'll get to that in a minute, but you can just see from this that it will not stick to the parent. You can actually use runtime actions in this case and stuff like that. All right, so now we can move on to the last option, which is to keep track of the parent object at regular intervals. And you'll see that there's two options associated with this, and that is the tracking accuracy and the set interval. And then the set interval has two options in that, which is to set the interval by time, or to set the interval by movement, so dots. And really, it's more distance. And so how we can test this is I'm just going to click on this for now. But let's start with the tracking accuracy. So in the intro, you saw that the bunny had like a nice smooth delay. Let's actually show that again here. See that it had a nice, a nice smooth movement to it as it was following the player. So if we were to bump this up to 100%, and this is percentage, by the way, so 100%, and we uh, play test it here, we'll see that the bunny is moving exactly how it would if it was stick to parent. So that tracking accuracy is, is applying at 100%. So you might as well just be using stick to parent if you're doing something like this. Now, if we went the other extreme and we went to one, we'll see that it is really, really <laughs> slow moving towards that. The, the tracking accuracy is, and you'll see that it gets faster and faster as you get farther away. So that's what it means by the, the accuracy, the smoothness of it. See how long it's taken to get to that, just the, the very end point there. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bump up the tracking accuracy to five again, and now we're gonna talk about the set movement since we're on it right now. And it's set to one because it's basically saying that it's going to keep updating every time it's less than one or if it's uh, greater than one pixel away. So in that case, it's going to be updating all the time. If we were to up this to say 300 pixels, 
then when we play test here, we're actually going to be able to move away a little bit before it starts adjusting. And you'll see that it's keeping its distance. And that is because it is not really updating until it's about 300 pixels away from the connection point in this case. All right, so now let's go to the set time intervals and we're going to set it up to a one second and we'll see how that behaves. So we can see that it's going to take one second for it to adjust. So when you are out of range or when it's not at the connection point anymore, it's going to take one second until it starts to move towards that connection point. One, 1,000, and then there it goes. So that is how the set time goes. We can also set it to zero, and if we play tested that, we'll see that it is following really well. So this could be an option as well, is to have the delay be what you want, and then set the set by time seconds to be zero and then you'll have that constant delayed accuracy follow. Alright so that is all the options for child object movement. Now let's move on to the received damage as child object and by default it is selected to change the target parent object and to also apply the damage rate to the parent. So let's see what this exactly means right here. And when the playtest pops up, you'll notice that I've had the blue boxes and the red boxes showing. If you hit F1, you can go to Debug Menu and you can turn those collision detections on. And so we'll see that when I get hit by the enemy, the player gets hit, a heart goes down. So notice I'm going to move through the enemy and I'm going to have the player right here where I'm not even touching the enemy. The bunny will be touching the enemy and notice my hearts as they, as they react to this. So you'll see the player's getting hit still, and my hearts are going down, and then boom, I died. Yet my player was not touching the attack detection at all, and that is because of the setting here, which is the change target parent object, apply the damage rate. So really with this option selected, you are extending the parent object's hit detection, in a, or collision detection in a way, because you're, you're giving more space for the parent to get hit. Now, what does this apply damage rate to the parent mean? In the basic settings of each object, you have a received damage rate. And this is going to be how much percentage of that damage are you receiving? If you think of it, you can kind of think of it like a shield. So if you had the shield on, you would receive 50% of that damage. Okay. So this bunny object right now is 100%. And the player is also 100%. So let's up the bunny up to 200%. All right, and now let's keep this uh, apply damage rate on. So right now, currently, uh, when this play test loads here, we'll see that when the player gets hit, I lose half a heart. So I get hit and I lost half a heart. Now let's watch what happens when the bunny gets hit. If I can, okay, so I lost another half a heart there. There, the bunny got hit, I lost a whole heart. And that is because the received damage rate for the bunny is 200%. So that means I took 200% damage. And since I'm applying damage rate to the parent, I'm applying the child's damage rate to the parent. So if I was to uncheck this, then I'm still able to get hit by the child, but I'm only going to take my parent's damage rate, which is the player. So boom, I get hit, half, half a health and then the bunny gets hit and you'll see that I also because I got hit before so one full heart was because I got hit by the player and then that half heart was from the bunny and I'll I'll show you this right here I'm gonna restart I'm gonna do the thing where I stand still and you'll see it just taking one half heart at a time just like that so that is what the apply damage rate means now the other thing is that we could do uh, self HP changes and that would break it away from the parent so the parent won't get damaged but the child can be damaged. So if we looked at how that goes we can see the 
the parent will get hurt if the parent touches, but the child is the only thing getting hurt. And in this case, nothing really happens other than the invincibility is triggering, but you can see that it is not affecting the parent at all. All right, so now we can move on to the next option, which is attack detection as the child object. And by default, it's selected to don't detect as an attack on the parent. So what this is just saying is that if your child object does have attack detection on it, if it's going to hit the parent or not. And we can see that when we play test. I have went ahead and added attack detection to this child. And you can see that with that option selected, it will not hurt. So if I uncheck this, now we can see that the child can actually hit the parent. All right, so I will select that back and let's go to the last options, which is the elements that are inherited from the parent object. And so the first one we see is the direction. And so if we were to uncheck this right away, we'd see a difference in the way it behaves when it moves. You'll notice last time, or one of the tests that we did where it was still turning in the direction even though it was not sticking to the parent, that is because we had the inherit the parent's direction. So you'll see that now it doesn't turn at all with me. We would have to manually turn it in order to for it to change its directions. So that's a useful feature to have actually is just to have it follow your parent. But if you ever not needed it, then you would click that off. All right, so now let's move on to the angle. And this is just simply referring to the rotation. So if I was to take the downward facing idle position and I was to rotate it, say just something like this. And if I was to go back, we have it selected. So we want the child to take over the angle of the parent. When we play tested, we would see that the sprite would also rotate the same as the player. Now, if we were to uncheck this, we would see that the player is still angled, but the bunny is not, the child's not. So now we can move on to the scale, and as you guess, it would have to do with the scale this time. So if we went over here and say we just widened the character 500 on the X, so the child's going to take over the scale of the parent, so if we play test this, we'll see that the child also expanded 500%. And if we unselect scale, we'll see that the child did not expand. Now this is obviously done in the animations. It can also be done in the scene. You can actually grab this right here, not so much a starting point, but you can grab an object per se, and you can scale it right here and you can also rotate it. So just note that this, it can also be applying to objects in the scene that are not necessarily set up like this in the animations. So I'm going to change this back to 100%. And then we'll go back and we'll go to this last option here, which is the objects filter effects. And the easiest way to see an example of this is we'll just play test with what we have currently. And you can see that when I get hit by the enemy as the player, I flash white. Well, let's look at the bunny, pay attention to the bunny when I get hit. And you'll see that it is also getting hit and flashing white. So that's what it's referring to is that the child is going to inherit the filter, even though the child's not set up to flash white, it's going to flash white because of the parent. If we were to unselect that and get hit, you'll see that the bunny now does not flash. Right, so that is it as far as all the child settings go. There is one more thing I want to go over and that is that I showed you that you can, when you're object connecting, you can make it into a child. There's a couple other ways that you can do it. For instance, one is when you generate an object, you can generate it as a child. The other one is in the bullet settings. Bullets can also be made into childs. So there are a couple ways to get that object as a child so that it can inherit some of those options that you would like to see. For instance, following direction could be an important one, or even extending the attack or hit detection of your parent. And so anyway, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, you can drop comments below, go to the Steam forums, or come to the Discord and ask them. 
We'll get you all figured out. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.